Lauren and Pete, North Las Vegas. We're back on a Camaro. Um, still working on the wiring, and I was I'm trying to get my dash done. And uh, this is the uh, headlight switch harness, and that runs about another foot back to the uh, fuse block. And this is how much harness they gave me. And that runs almost to the end of the door. So uh, all the way back to the fuse block, to the end of this connector, it's like five and a half feet. <laughs> I have no idea why, when I only need about two. So anyway, because they gave me so much wiring, uh, there, there's too much here to coil up and hide behind a dash. So I'm going to have to shorten the harness. So my options were either just cut the harness and butt splice it, which I didn't want to do. It's a brand new harness. I don't want to butcher it if I don't have to. Or the other option was, was to take the terminals out of the headlight uh, connector block and then shorten the harness and then re-terminate new terminals and plug them back into the connector for a, a cleaner install, which is where the confusion started. Okay. So on a connector that they gave me, this is called a nine pin or nine way female. And this is the extra terminal they give you versus your, your standard eight pin. Your standard eight pin, you only get these. On a nine pin, you get this. So, okay, it's a nine pin, so what? Well, on this particular nine pin, they installed what's called a rocking horse. I think that's a slang term. I don't know what these are actually called. But they installed this uh, rocking horse terminal. And on this particular nine pin connector, that's the only thing that fits in here. Nothing else will fit in the back there except that style terminal. Now you can get a newer style female nine pin and this will be a 59 series connector. So that will be this one here. So why does my connector have an extra terminal? Well, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, like I said, most of the standard headlight switch connectors are generally 8-pin. And uh, that ninth pin I was just showing you connects to the side here and provides a ground. And they have the ground jumpered off of this here, and then this wire goes down. So you ground this wire, and it jumpers down to here, and that grounds the housing of the light switch through this lug right here. So now that we know how this newer style light switch uh, works and why they're using a nine pin, um, we can go compare that to the, the way they did it on the original uh, equipment. Okay, so here's the old uh, original equipment headlight switch. And here's that new one again. And you can see that I was pointing out earlier the uh, side lug for the ground. Um, this old style did not have that. This is what you had to do. So, by American Auto Wire, uh, using the newer style 9-pan and jumpering the ground over, um, makes for a little bit cleaner install. You don't have to worry about this. So, and you can see there's uh, quite a few less pins on the old original equipment. And they didn't use all the slots on the old wiring. So anyway, um, back to what I'm going to do on the harness. Um, that smaller original rocking terminal, uh, I was having a really difficult time finding those online. And nobody sells them individually. I uh, just really hard time finding it. So um, and that's this one right here. So what I discovered was... Um, that same connector is used on their uh, dash cluster wiring kit. And this is the, uh, the connector that plugs into the back of the uh, instrumentation housing. And so those are the same terminals. So that's kind of what started all this, was trying to figure out how to shorten this cable and get the terminals that I needed. So I have some uh, 56 double and single wire on order, which are a quarter inch uh, for the lugs. And then I have some... Uh, double and single wire 59 series, which are the bigger uh, 0.320 lugs, which is this size here. 
So between what I have on order, the extra rocking horse terminals that I got with the dash kit, um, I'll be able to uh, shorten this harness and do a nice clean install and plug everything back into the uh, connector they gave me. Now, if I didn't have these, what I was going to have to do was, um, like I was saying earlier in the video, order the uh, the AC Delco uh, nine pin female, which uses the 59 series only right there. And uh, no big deal, but uh, Summit Summit Racing has it. It's a uh, AC Delco PT327, and then I think the GM part number for the uh, the nine pin that uses the 59 series connector is 12102660. So um, I will be able to shorten the cable. I do have the connectors and terminals I need right now as soon as I get some more 56 and 59 series. But anyway, I just thought I'd make this video. I, I hope I didn't get anybody too confused or mixed up. And the only other thing maybe you probably want to talk about besides the headlight switch is the uh, windshield wiper switch. Okay, so on the kit that I got from uh, American Auto Wire, uh, they gave me the connector and my, my old switch on this 71 Camaro had a separate ground wire and we'll we'll go show you where that's at and then I'll kind of explain why. Okay, so I do have other grounds that I'm going to be using on the American Auto Wire harness to provide the ground to the windshield wiper switch. And the way this worked was the ground wire went to the body of the switch and provided a ground to these connections. So on Low speed uh, through the switch, you get a ground on the low speed connector and the high speed connector. And then in high speed, you only get a ground to the high speed connector. And um, I figured all that out when I was uh, testing the windshield wiper motor. And I made some notes on my drawing here. So low speed requires a ground for both low and high. High speed requires a ground only. And then uh, something else I discovered um, my wiper did not want to shut off during bench testing if the external ground was removed while in high speed. It wouldn't return to park. So the unit must be returned to low speed first for off and park to occur. So I hope that didn't get anybody confused. But depending on the sequence of when you remove the grounds to the windshield wiper motor, will determine whether it functions correctly and goes into park correctly. So if you get the, the ground removal uh, when bench testing without using the switch, if, if you get that out of sequence, the uh, windshield wiper won't, won't behave correctly. Okay, well, like I said earlier in the, the clips, I hope I didn't get anybody too confused. Um, one other thing about the back to the headlight switch. Um, on the headlight switch packaging, that the actual switch came in. This is the wiring diagram that they gave me. And I drew this in and that's position H for a nine pin. Now, depending on whether you have an older style, it uses this for H, or if you got a newer style that uses this for H. But this is what they had on the drawing. This is what I actually had, a nine pin. And the color coding, this is what they're saying typical. And some of the wiring on their typical for the light switch did not match what's actually on the harness or the positions. So um, this did match the harness with the exception of they did not show the ground wire for this uh, light switch. And the wiper ground, they showed a ground for the wiper, a separate ground, but they didn't show it like, like it was connected to the switch. So I drew this in there with a pencil just to kind of remind myself that I need to get the ground to the switch body. And then um, I couldn't find, uh, I couldn't find anywhere on this drawing uh, where they showed the, the ground for the headlight switch. So it might be on here somewhere, but I never found it. 
but here's where most of your ground circuitry is. So anyway, like I said, uh, oh, and on this drawing here, they show the nine pin. And this over here, they're only showing one, two, three, four, five, six, if you include the ground, seven. So between what's actually on the harness, nine pin, the drawings, the pictures on the drawings, and the descriptions, um, not a whole lot of it's in agreement. Like I said, I kind of got it all figured out. I know what I need to do now, but it's like every time I come out to this car, it, it's something. It's just something. It's just, it's not quite right. Anyway, Pete North Las Vegas over and out.